I'm Lori McNee with Ion Sun Valley, and this is Artbeat. And today I am at the home studio of Ann Jeffrey in Bellevue, Idaho. And Ann is a fine art photographer, and uh, right now you're specializing in digital collage, correct? Hyper collage. Hyper collage. And there's a couple examples of her beautiful work behind us. And can you tell us a little bit about what, what is hyper collage? Well, we call it hyper collage, and it's kind of, um, as Photoshop developed, it's made it easier and easier to extract elements from a photograph and then layer them in Photoshop. And so a lot of mine have, they're hyper collage because they may have 80 to 100 different layers. And so that's totally different. A montage or a collage, you think maybe four or five things put together, but this is more like 80 to 100. It's very complex. And so you have to understand photography and lighting, and then to understand how to use the computer and Photoshop. So it's been an evolution, I'm sure, in your career. So take us back a bit. How did this all come about? Well, uh, I always wanted to be a photographer. And I grew up in California, and so um, I was familiar with Ansel Adams, Imogene Cunningham, all these you know, wonderful, great black and white photographers. So I actually, in high school, took a correspondence course in photography. But then I wanted to be a photographer, but my dad said, no, you have to go to college, uh -oh. you have to get a useful <laughs> degree. Right. And so I did that, yes. and then I went to Brooks Institute of Photography. And you followed your passion, and what happened from there? Well, my first job actually was working at the, which was, it's now the National Interagency Fire Center, but it was the Boise Interagency Fire Center at the time, and they hired me to uh, be a photographer uh, for wildfires. So I went out in the, and photographed wildfires. Oh my goodness. And so I bet you got some very dramatic uh, photographs back then, correct? Some, yes. except for you have to understand that we didn't have the intensity or the number of wildfires back then oh, that we do now. Interesting. Can I ask why? I mean, I, we're digressing, but that's kind of an interesting statement. What would be just... The difference, in, you know, we're just having longer summers. We're having okay. drier summers. Interesting. Uh, you know, yes. So you're having longer fire seasons, the fires are more intense. When you do out, go out as a fire photographer, there's some things that you are documenting just for uh, training purposes or documentation of the fire. Okay. But then, you know, if you're a photographer, you're always looking to get the so you dramatic. Still are. Yes, you're always looking to get the dramatic okay. shot. And do you have some of those? Or not a lot because uh, at the time, you know, everything I took belonged to the government. Oh, wow. And so back then you were working in, dark, in a dark room, correct? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> this so, is all film. Yes. And so you did all the developing and manipulation of the photo back then as well. Right. So, and that was the, that's where you had your hands were brown yes, because you were sticking your hands right. in the chemicals. I took some photography back in college, I remember. Yeah. So then from there, then what happened? Well, then I got a job uh, and I was actually an audiovisual production specialist, which added video production to oh, photography. And that was for the Bureau of Land Management in Santa Fe at their state office. So I did a lot of video production and a lot of documenting, you know, a lot of the grin and grips, which right. is the <laughs> meat and potatoes yes. of photography. Right. And then when did you go digital? I That's started, a big step, I bet, right? Well, you know, for me, I really didn't like working with all the chemicals. So I oh, was good. an early adopter of okay. digital because uh, really it's just, you know, they smell bad. They're bad yes. for your skin. They're bad for you. So um, I started learning Photoshop in the late 90s. Oh, goodness. So you're a pro at that for sure. Well, I've been doing Photoshop forever. Yes. It, it keeps changing. It's yes. ultimately very complex. There are 10 ways to do one thing and different ways to do it. So... Photoshop, it's just kind of, you just have to keep working with it. Wonderful. And so I, I can't wait for you to show us a little bit about Photoshop and how you manipulate your photos. Okay, so you specialize in the minutia of nature, uh, botanicals quite a bit, correct? And what else? Well, you know, I used to, you know, do the grand scenic and all that. And it ha what I'm doing with the photo... Uh, collages and montages now is it's all small, you know, a, a bug, a butterfly, a, a single flower, a leaf. And it's changed how I look at the world too, because now I'm looking for the little details and not the, you know, not the mountain scale. Yeah. How did you make that switch from looking out at the landscape to looking at the smaller bits of life? Well, I think part of it 
Well, I started, you know, wanting to learn how to manipulate things in Photoshop, and it started with something as easy. You take a portrait of somebody, and one eye's half closed. Oh, right. You can take the other eye, select it, flip oh, it. Oh my goodness! And <laughs> it looks natural. Right. So, you know, I just started doing things like that with, um, you know, your more your more normal photograph. Right. And then I said, well, I could do this, and I could do that, and I, then I started having more fun and mixing and matching. And then I saw the work of uh, Isabelle LeMay. Uh, I had subscribed to the newsletter of a uh, gallery in Santa Fe, and her work was exhibited there, and I was just blown away. Oh, that's and amazing. So I started looking at her work and trying to do what she did, and then I was that's extremely fun. lucky to be able to take a workshop with her. Well, great. Well, I'm really excited to get in the other part of your studio where we can see how you work and at the computer, correct? You're yes. going to take us in there? Yeah. So we're going to take a break and we'll be right back and we're going to be back with Ann Jeffrey. Better food, better price, better service. Atkinson's Market, supporting local farmers since 1956. I moved out to Idaho four years ago, so I met a lot of people and, and I really, really like it here. You know, if you don't have something like that that brings you into other people's lives, it takes a long time to get to know people. Welcome back to Artbeat. I'm Lori McNee and I'm in the studio of Ann Jeffrey, fine art photographer. She's going to deconstruct one of her beautiful paintings for us and show us how the process works. Hey. So this is, uh, I call it fern grotto because there's ferns in here. Okay. And everything's kind of growing out of the background. But you start, I started this, this is a picture of seaweed. And I started with it because you need some texture in the background. Now, where'd you get that shot? Uh, uh, that Actually, I took that in Tasmania. In Tasmania. Okay. I think traveling, you, you see things differently. So Absolutely. So you find more things, it seems like. So I took that seaweed, and then I took some of the color out. And then, so this background has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten layers. Oh my goodness. So I put color back in. And then, well, I changed the, made it a little more contrasty, a little darker. And then because I, my vision was really not for seaweed, it was for ferns, I started adding ferns. Okay. And so that gives you the fern texture. You see the fern leaves, but they're, you know, you... Subtle. Subtle, yeah. And this is one I added, and I said, oops, no, that doesn't work. So there's the background. So you go back, and down... And there it is underneath. Then. Yeah, that's, okay. the, that's the total background. So you go down here, and there's this guy down here. Uh, is that Queen Anne, Anne's Lace? Is that what that is? You know, I'm not sure whether yeah, it is I or not. I believe so. It's beautiful. I call it the ferny thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, you can move it around like that. But to get to having that, I had to extract it. And what I started with the advantage of taking pictures in my own studio is I can uh, decide what the background is. So when you have a plain background like this, you can go to extract it. So you just have the, what I call the ferny thing. You go up here and you extract it by selecting the color range. Well, I deliberately took this on a gray background because a gray background is very neutral. So the colors the won't... The color will pop or... Well, the other thing is, if you take it on a white background, mm -hmm. uh, there'll be a white kind of halo around oh, right. all of it. Or you take it on a black, then there's a black halo. Gray is very neutral. So what I do is I select the gray background. So that's what I've selected. And... Are you doing this with each and every element, then, that you're layering? Yes, each oh, and every wow. element. How tedious. Yeah, I bet. This so to create one of your digital paintings takes how long, would you say? Uh, you know, lots of times it takes me up to a month. A month. Because you have to put it together, and you'd be surprised how many elements in that final one I don't use. 
That's one of the most common questions I get is how long does it take to paint that? The dreaded question, and I asked her that basically. But I can imagine how tedious this process is just by watching this little demonstration. Okay, so continue. So what I did is I selected the background and then I went in and did an inverse select. And then I go up and I mask it. And look at that. I mean, this is, for me, this is totally amazing because it has so many fine details, but actually by getting rid of the gray background, I came up with uh, all that detail. And that works if you're able to take it with a, a solid background, but if, you're, if this was up against something green, I would have to go around each little right. point and select it. So that, that's a pretty great technique for you. Yes. So that's what you get come okay. up with. And so you've done that then with each of those individual elements and then you layer them, kind of move them around where you want them. Most of the, my elements are bugs and flowers and stuff, but you need something fun and interesting. And I saw this glass ball. It's in, I mean, I, would, I actually walked into somebody's garden oh, to take perfect. it. But you can also, you go ahead and do that the- That makes it more playful. Yes. Yes. So I was able to extract it like that. And then when I put it into here, there it is. There it is. Yeah. And if you'll notice, I, you know, not only extracted it, but you changed the background a little. So it looks like it's perfectly clear. It's not, but by just changing, uh, the transparency then is a that, little bit. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, I like it clear the way you chose. Yeah. And that you can also, you know, you, I can move him around too. That. So, and then I've added a butterfly there and a butterfly there and uh, bubbles. Those are really hard. Yeah. Are they? Yeah. Why are bubbles hard? They reflect everything. Okay. So, like, uh, I don't have it, but if you'll see, you know, I've, I've really, all you're seeing is the outline of the bubble because I've uh, masked back all the things. So. You would have, if you take them out in the yard, you'll have trees and flowers and right. they reflect everything. Okay, so tell me, once you have this completed, then what? So when I finish, it is multi-layers and uh, you can see right here that it's 72 layers for this finished one. That's a lot of layers. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay, so then what happens next? Well, I post it on my website and uh, then I have, was have prints made. Okay. And, they, and Instagram. And Instagram. I have <laughs> exactly. Instagram. Yeah. Okay. And we can find your work locally where? Uh, I have two pieces in the airport behind security. I got to go through security to see them. And I have one in the hospital. Okay. And coming up in March, I will have two images uh, in an exhibit in Barcelona, Spain. Wonderful. That's exciting. Yeah. And then you're also part of the Wood River Valley Studio Tours. Tour. And a founding member of the Bellevue Artist Alliance. Well, congratulations on that. Well, good. We, so your website, we can find you online at, at www.andjeffreyphotography.com. Okay. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, Anne, and for allowing me in your beautiful studio home, home studio. And thank you for joining us with Ion Sun Valley and Artbeat. And I'm Lori McNee and hope to see you next time.